Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday talk within the Ninth Sided Circle. I'm one of your two hosts, Noor Kyle. And I am two of your two hosts, Mushtaq Ali. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So um, thanks for being here, whether you're here live or watching on the replay. We're happy to have you joining us and uh, got to do a little bit of the YouTube spiel, which is you can best help us out by subscribing to our content if you like you can leave a comment which we love you can give us a little thumbs up yeah, you like can we love it when you like our video yeah um and lastly you can share our content we always forget to mention this but please feel free to post this just about wherever you like as long as yeah. you know ideally you you're not posting like us to get trolled but <laughs> if you like what we say share us with your friends if you hate yeah. what we say share us with your enemies it's that simple sure excellent um and if you'd like to support us in other ways you can donate to our paypal or our coffee account you can buy a t-shirt you can email us to ask about one-on-one -on -one sessions each of us do those um yeah, so I wanted to keep that kind of short and sweet. Do you have anything you want to add, Mushtaq? No. No. Excellent. Yes. And um, our retreat is in, our virtual retreat, I mean, is in full swing now. Um, we have pretty much closed uh, registration for this year, but this is an annual thing that we do, God willing, so you can always join us next year in 2024 yeah so anyways let's get to our topic for this evening and we are going to be talking about the hidden secret of the pause the pause exercise some of you will be familiar with this thing the stop exercise from the Gurdjieff work i.e. the fourth way and fourth way adjacent schools, they tend to do that stuff. Um, and we have a little bit of engagement with that practice as well. And Mushtaq is going to go into further detail on that and why, even though we are not a fourth way school, it is still very oh, there relevant. Are, there are, in fact, Sufi schools that use this exercise. Exactly. That's that's where I wanted to take this, is that... The fourth way people stole it from us! <laughs> essentially, yeah. Which talk isn't them. wrong. Somebody so stole it from somebody. We will touch on that as well. So... Yeah. Yeah, we have a comment from... Well, I think they've been having a conversation oh. from prior to when we yeah, got started. Somebody's Wittgenstein, and it only yes. goes from there. <laughs> yeah. So please uh, continue, Mishtak. Okay. It is Nick's birthday, though, so quoting Wittgenstein is important. Aw, happy birthday, Nick. Well, his, I think it was a couple of days ago, but it's still very much appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Onward. Onward. What are we talking about? The stop exercise. Oh, yes. Stop. <laughs> All right. If you have seen meetings with remarkable men, either the original good version or the stupid recut version of it. This is a film, right? Yes, this is. When the is that? 70s? Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, towards the end, they have uh, some of the students of Madame de Saltzman, who was Gurdjieff's dance teacher, <laughs> going through the various Gurdjieff movements. And in one of them, they're going through all these movements and they're here and there. And then all of a sudden you hear somebody say, stop. And everybody freezes exactly where they are. And that's what the stop exercise looks out. Looks like from the outside. From the inside, you're trained to immediately stop and remember yourself. That's the part that you can't see, but is going on. You are remembering yourself. You are being present. You are being in the present moment. You drop your internal dialogue. Now, this is cool. 
And we used to do it in my first Sufi school. Uh, the Sheikh would walk through and, you know, if it looked like everybody was lost in their own thoughts, he would, uh, in Arabic, you say, uh, or Tofa means, and everybody freezes. And it doesn't matter in what position you are. And some people got so good at it that if they were taking a step, they would freeze halfway through the step, even if they fell over and they would fall over in the position that they were in. Uh, we don't actually do that. I don't approve of people falling on their face. But that's all well and good, right? That's cool. You got a you got a Sufi exercise you're doing. You can tell your friends about it. It's a good trick at parties. But why? Why are you doing this? What of what value outside of the school setting is this practice? This, of course, is something of a rhetorical question because I am going to answer it for you in a in a little bit. But I would like your thoughts first. Take a stab. Yeah. Uh, hello. Khalil, yes. Disrupts the automatic cognitive functioning. Allows a space or a gap to enter in, in which another force might uh, inform you of your behavior, of who you are, perhaps even of yourself. Um, that will override your normal kind of habitual machine-like activity. That's pretty much it, yeah. Yep, and Nancy, did you have something you wanted to share? Uh, yeah, possibly it rewards um, oh, being self-aware all the time. Um, it's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. It definitely rewards being self-aware. Yeah. Thanks, James, Nancy. What do you think? I, I see the steam coming out of your ears. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I was thinking of, I was trying to work out is what's the dif the difference between that as an exercise and just sort of neurotic self monitoring, just sort of. Egoically motivated inhibitions. Um, they can't be the same thing. No. The difference is that if you're doing the stop exercise right, you enter in a state of presence. You are self-remembering. You are being present. You drop whatever is going on inside of you, and you become present. That's the, the secret. Now, this is all well and good. And then you go home and you're doing your life and there's nobody there to yell stop for you. What do you do? You don't do nothing until you get back to the school and then you do the exercises again and it's all well and groovy and then you go home. But only if your teacher doesn't know what the next step in the damn program is. This is designed to help you create a part of yourself that can call the stop under certain circumstances. And those circumstances are the moment that you are cognizant of the fact that you are about to run one of your in internal loops or eternal loops, as the case may be. You know, I walk in, I'm, I'm walking and I'm making my coffee and Nora comes in and she says, meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. yeah, she That's actually right. has never done that. But if she did, then I might go and get ready to respond to her in an angry way or something. Meow, 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 meow. This, is, this is a situation where my internal 
uh, guardian says, Oof. and I go, oh, and I stop, which is the first step to breaking that loop. But there's more. But the first thing you have to learn is to is to stop the pattern yourself. This is not for when you're walking down the street and you say, stop to yourself and you freeze with one foot in the air. This is for when you see your internal mechanical patterns beginning to come to the fore and one of your little mechanical eyes, one of your little robot selves is about to take over and do its thing, run its program. And the best place to catch this, the place that that makes a difference is in the beginning just as it's starting to happen so you train yourself to use this internal cue to stop that and to enter into a state of presence first step but it can't end there also you only use it when it's appropriate if i'm walking down the street and This Doberman comes out of a yard and he's like growling at me and, and approaching me in an incredibly hostile way. I am not going to do the stop exercise. Not in that sense. I'm going to I'm going to run a different program. I'm, I'm going to run the tree climbing exercise or something along those lines. But so this is not useful for every situation, but it is useful for those situations where you are about to play one of your mechanical programs. Now, you follow me so far? Anybody want to argue? Damn it. Well, I do have a question. Sure. Good. I, I see the importance of the teacher being there in the beginning to have the stop coming as a shock to the to the student. Yes. How how can I introduce can it be self-generated? Can that shock be self-generated? It can be. It's a lot harder. It's all basically you can do it all on your own. As far as I can tell, it will just take 10 times as long and you'll make a hundred times more mistakes, but it'll all be yours. And even that is not as bad as finding a phony teacher uh, who just sucks your money dry and, and keeps you a slave to whatever ego trips they got going. So you got that going for you. I mean, shit, you could join Scientology. <laughs> yeah, it does seem that this exercise specifically, just like this outside factor has really, at least in the beginning. Yeah. It's beginning, really it important. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the secret answer is the next time we do an in-person retreat, come to it. This is one of the ways that you can learn this exercise. And some things can only be taught in person, which is sad. But you can work on this on your own. You can. It's just a matter of you have to be vigilant to this, those times when um, your patterns come up, your, your mechanical habits come to the fore. And that's a lot of work. If you have somebody helping you, keeping an eye on you, and and delivering the shock when they see that happening, and they have to have the skill to see it happening, and then you will still be able to do it. So don't let anybody tell you that you cannot walk the path all on your own. Just remember that it takes 10 times as long and you make as, uh, at least 100 times as many mistakes as if you would if you had a good teacher.
in my experience. If I didn't have my teachers, I'd still be standing on a street corner wearing a leather jacket and sharpening my switchblade, which at my age would look pretty damn stupid. Nancy. Um, what about a, you should find the expression, a mechanical thing that says stop, like having a beeper on your watch or something? Um, it, it won't work. Okay, that covers yeah. that. Yeah, no, because it has to, it has to be delivered when your internal programming starts to take effect. And the oh. mechanical beeper you know, it's just, it's pretty much just time to go off. And your mechanical self is smart enough to notice that. And it won't poke its head out until after the beeper. Yeah. Um, someone in the chat says, I downloaded the Muezzin app so, such that the call to prayer, the Adzan, has become my stop. So it sounds like you're saying, Mushtaq, that it's not exactly the same thing. No, well, but the, the, the prayer times change every day. So it's yeah. not, it's not an automatic yeah. Right. I, I understand how those work. I think that the idea here, I mean, that is valuable in and of itself, of course. In this case, it's the spontaneity of having, I'll use common language we may hear today, you know, a trigger comes up. And then you're having this stop moment in response to that trigger, as opposed to it being, Oh, it's it's you yeah. know it's time it's for not the, to say that, that the call prayer. to prayer definitely is an invitation to be awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like I said, it's different. valid. But yeah, and I I personally like that app, uh, not necessarily for morning prayer, but I like the app. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're in the middle of a really good dream and you hear that. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Or you're at a family cookout with a bunch of non Muslims. And <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Unfortunate, awkward moments in the George family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you're out on a date and the sun goes down. <laughs> <sighs> good times yep we've all been there mm -hmm. <laughs> so um yeah again while that is a, a valid practice unto itself what we're talking about here is a little bit different and a little more spontaneous okay so you deliver to yourself the shock stop And the first thing you do long exhale right after the stop you you are you hit with the stop the exhale is your cue to be present in the moment in your body now let's assume that this is a situation where you're dealing with the other. Somebody is saying something that's triggering you. You feel the trigger coming up. You give yourself the stop. And then as you're exhaling, you move backwards and create distance between you and whatever triggered you. It may only be the difference between this and this, but you move backwards. And I prefer to move backwards in a, in, at an angle, but that's just me. You move backwards. So, stop. So You were going to say, Noor? I was going to say, so there's something you're doing physically to kind of indicate that stepping back from the stimulus. Yes. You are creating 
a space that is very important to this process. Once you've created this distance, the next thing that you do is you let your vision widen. Most of the time when you're triggered, you get pinpoint vision, right? And you're doing this. And Start oftentimes, with your, yeah, yeah, and oftentimes with your hands up like this. Like yeah, this is this right? is a, a, a boxer stance. I'm protecting my neck with my chin, my hands are up to guard. And so what I want to do is lift my head up, move myself back, and move my hands maybe like this. And rather than taking in just the person, take in everything that you can see. Take in the big picture, not the narrow focus. And when I can achieve this, this is the place from which I respond. So let's all try that. Everybody sit up just like this. Sorry, James, you look comfortable, but I don't want you to be comfortable. <laughs> So I say, stop. And you go. <sighs> see the whole picture, not just looking at me on the screen, but see either side of the screen, above the screen, below the screen, the room, Take in everything. You never know. There may be ninjas trying to sneak up on you. And if you let your focus be wide, you'll see them. Those ninjas, they're sneaky. And from here, you assess and then you respond. So stop, center, gain distance, assess, respond. Again, you don't do this with a charging bowl. You do this with a situation that you're being triggered in, but is not an immediate jump out of the way of the car situation. So this could be with another person, I'd imagine. This could be you're reading something on the internet. It could, could be, be a thought coming in up your in your head, head while you're walking down the street. Yeah. And each of those is an invitation to stop, step back, widen your focus, assess, and respond appropriately. This is the secret to the stop exercise. The stop exercise is designed to train you to do this, to train you to interrupt your own patterns. Now, a pattern is a habit. A habit is one unit of behavior. A pattern, a habit is one unit of behavior. It used to be a lot of people smoke cigarettes. Cigarette smoking is a habit. And the way it worked is you get a stimulus and you have reach for your pack of cigarettes, shake a cigarette out, take it, put it in your mouth, light it, take a drag. That is the one unit of behavior. If I were a hypnotist, like say Milton Erickson, and somebody started doing that in front of me, I would wait till they were just about to light the cigarette and I would reach out and just take it from their hand and look at them and say, you know, if it's easier for you to just close your eyes and relax than to try and understand what just happened, please feel free to do so. Just let your eyes close 
and go into a nice, comfortable trance. And the person is going to be within seconds because you have interrupted their pattern. Now, what we're doing is we are getting you to interrupt your own damn pattern. Because if you learn to interrupt your patterns, nobody can interrupt them for you or not as easily. And it gives you a, a bit of protection against some of that stuff. Politicians all work by triggering patterns. And most of the patterns that they work with are fear and anger. It's a lot easier to manipulate people through fear and anger than it is to manipulate them through love and kindness. Don't ask me why, but it's the case. But be careful about those too. Yeah. yeah. Sympathy. They know how to. Oh yeah. You find those sympathy. In, in certain religious organizations where they do what's called love bombing. Yeah. Or sob stories and all of that stuff. But even with that, anger and fear are the easiest levers to work on a person. So when you feel yourself getting angry or fearful and there's no tiger in the room, stop. <laughs> Take a breath. Move back. Create distance. Let your head come up. Not here. Here, head comes up. Breathe. Be present. Assess the situation. Broad view where you can see everything. I don't just see, if I'm looking at my picture here, I don't just see me sitting in the chair. I see the entire structure behind me i see the mountains in the distance i see the trees i see the clouds i see the little birdies in the trees all of these things and this is the whole point of the stop exercise is to give you the ability to do this for yourself to Learn a state where you create enough distance and you shift from, um, God, what was it? Oh, yeah. The, uh, the general semantics people, uh, they talk about, or those of, the, those of them who are into science fiction, talk about the idea of the corticothalamatic pause. This is kind of what you're doing. The thalamus kicks in. You're about to react. You create a pause so that your higher functions can take over. This is what you want. You, you want your higher functions, your higher centers to operate rather than your lower centers to operate. We do not want your instinctual, your emotional, or your thinking center to do the operating. We want the higher emotional and the higher thinking centers to do the, the operating on this. And that gives you a completely different thing. And that does not happen automatically. That happens when you can be conscious and present in the moment, when your focus can be broad rather than tight, and when you can create distance. I and mean, think about two people arguing, arguing, right? They get closer and closer and closer and they're yelling in each other's faces. Nothing good is going to come from that. No resolution that is healthy is possible in that situation. But if one of them sits back and stops for a second. First of all, it's going to shock the shit out of the other person. And it gives you a moment to take everything in. And you can let go of your, your mechanical perspective and operate from your being rather than your ego. 
this is the secret to the stop exercise. This is the secret teaching hidden within it, that you can go through this process and use it every day. Make sense? You get one thumbs up. Yep. The The thing that stood out to me is this going backwards or this back step or creating distance. It really, for me, it brought about this quality this relationship with space in a different way yes yeah that's that really that that stood out to me yeah and it can be very subtle but the fact is that our psychology and our physiology are one so how can we use that to our advantage this is one of those ways Yeah, I, Brian. Okay. Um, I thought it was interesting um, talking about doing it alone uh, because for the past like year or so before I eat, I try to stop and then bring attention to my posture, my thinking and what I'm feeling. But just this week, I felt like that practice was becoming mechanical. You know, and so I can sit down, eat, all right, go through, you know, go through the three centers. And so I was actually just wondering this week, you know, like, can it really be done um, on your own? Or is it a good thing? Is it a good thing that I'm actually asking myself maybe twice a day? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? How's my body? And then eat, you know, so is that. Um, yeah, what are your it's thoughts? absolutely a good thing. How could you go wrong? And yes, it will have a tendency to become mechanical. And yes, you must guard against that. And it will be hard if you don't have a friend. Uh, yeah, because um, I, I, I questioned whether it was when it when it felt like it became just habit. Is it still that higher functioning, or is it just you know is it? Often it... not. So you have to bring it back from the habit. So And that's where the hard work comes in. You know, this is like, you know, some of us do prayer. You know, uh, the Mosaic app goes off and you take time and you go through this, this very ritualized prayer. And it can be total habit or it can be completely conscious it can be either or or it can be part of one and part of the other somewhere meanderingly in between yes yeah. <laughs> and it's it, as humans it's one of the things that you get stuck with is that we like habits because we're lazy we love to not have to think about how to do stuff. And in a lot of cases, that's a good thing. If you had to think about driving, you'd wreck your car. You want the good driving habits. Of course, people like to develop bad habits with their driving and add other things like texting while driving or texting while riding their bike. I saw a kid almost get killed two days ago riding his bike down the street, texting, blew through a stop sign, didn't notice that there was a, a car who was also blowing through the stop sign. They came within a few inches of killing each other. Scary. Yeah. But well, we have to remember, people are stupid. And we love to be habitual. So what do you think, Brian? Uh, well, I definitely know my tendency to be stupid. <laughs> As do we all. Cool. Good response. Uh, 
Khalil says, so weird. The second that Mushtaq said Muazin app, the Muazin app went off for Maghrib, which is like the evening prayer. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is that time for I am I am in, in cahoots with your app. <laughs> Any other people want to speak about anything this evening? Nancy, I did see you unmuted at one point. Did you have something you wanted to share? Uh you're you're muted now, just so you know. It was the thing about politicians using fear and anger. Mm. And there's a third one, which is exaltation. Ah. Um, Hitler used the vision of the future Reich. And um, it was actually thinking about Hitler where I realized your imagination is not always on your side. Mm. Yeah. True that. Thanks, Nancy. You're welcome. Thank you. Maria, I, if you're there and if you have any thoughts you might like to share, I'd love to hear from you. I'm, I'm just listening in um, and taking in what others have to say. So appreciating it, what mm. everyone's sharing. Cool. James, how about you? Well, this is actually really, really pertinent to where I'm at. Um, at the moment, uh, I, through circumstance, I actually spend a lot of time by myself at the moment. Um, but if uh, I get lost in my own thoughts and their angry thoughts, they're the easiest things to sort of pick up on because they don't feel nice. And I sometimes will verbally say stop and try and pretty much do what's already been described. Uh, the great temptation is I can, okay, I can sort of, my awareness can go wide, but I often feel the emotions and questions sort of still rumbling and grumbling away in the background. And the temptation to re-engage them because the idea in your head, somehow you'll re-engage them and somehow manipulate them away, work them out, solve the internal problem this time. Even if the internal problem is an argument you had with someone five years ago and it's just resurfacing and resurfacing, you won't let it go. Um, I don't know if I'm saying anything here that isn't particularly uh, obvious, but uh, it's just pertinent to me because I'm sort of at that point where trying failing trying having some glimmer of something and failing again then trying so i'm i'm sort of stuck that stuck there at the moment that's what i'm working on uh no i'm just talking in circles now this is very timely for me i appreciate this man that's all i've got to say oh i love it when a plan comes together <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh, um, I know that I can't go backwards. I can't fall back on all the th things I used to do mentally. I know that's a dead end. Keeping myself going forwards or just sticking with it, grinding away. I seem to be in a, in a position where I'm just grinding away at the moment. And every now and then it seems to have a pleasant side effect. Like I'll suddenly get a uh, a taste, a glimmer of something, which is nice. Um, but uh, yeah, um, this is put into that. that. That's everything. I can't think of anything else I can draw out of that. I'll milk that for all I can. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. Um, Halil, do you have anything you'd like to to add? Yeah, I've got several alarm clocks to set. I won't go and, and extend on all the different ways I do stop. But one particular thing that's been helpful to me is combining stop with um, Gurdjieff's aphorism, like what it does not like. So whenever I hear, whenever I feel a strong sensation of liking or disliking, you know, if somebody really irritates me or 
if I'm really attracted to eating something I'm not supposed to eat or something, I know that these likes and dislikes are a stop for me. So I'll use that for stop. But then on top of that, after the stop, I will attempt to then like deconstruct the like or the dislike and try to figure out a way mentally that I could somehow like what I don't like and and don't and dislike what I say I like. Just a little extra thing there. What do you think, Mushtaq? Sounds good. <laughs> this is one of those things where I probably don't actually need to have a particular opinion. Yeah. Yep. Good. I'm glad that works for you, Khalil. And so you all have a practice this week in this. Yeah. Well, really not just this week, right? This yeah, is... for the rest of your life. You're stuck with it now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Trust me. You can unlearn it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Human Amen beings have that. the amazing ability to go to sleep behind anything. Mm -hmm. So here's the practice. Keep yourself aware. When you notice a habit being triggered in you. And it doesn't even have to be interacted with somebody else. It could be that piece of cheesecake. There is going to be a point where you start talking yourself into eating that piece of cheesecake. And that's where you go, stop. You don't have to say it in Arabic even. English works just as well. I don't even know if we've used the Arabic word. Yeah, we've used the Arabic word. Yeah. Yeah. But do the stop. Take the breath. Bring yourself to present. Move backwards. Move your head upwards. Let your chin raise. Doesn't mean do this doesn't mean do this it means do this and move your head upwards face up upright like yeah. forward basically yeah i need better language for this but this is what i got in the moment yeah and let your vision be wide take in everything change your perspective get a wider perspective and act after you've assessed. This actually works really good. I have had to change my diet a couple of times in my life. Most recently in the last few months. And I've had to give up a couple of foods that I really love. And I get tempted, especially when somebody around me gets that bag of tater chips out and starts munching on them. And I'm like, yay. But then I use this and I can get a little perspective and walk away. As opposed to talking myself into why, okay, just this once, it's okay to eat the entire bag of potato chips. Right out, just snag it, run off, hide under the bed, eat the potato chips. <laughs> yes. We're not going to do that. Nope. No. So this is interesting because I think this, I don't know if we spoke about this exercise. I, I'm not sure. When we um, had the videos about the Enneagram of the will, we um, we've touched on similar ideas in that but nothing this discreet and nothing tying it to the stop right and i i can see now that there can be because you also shared during that uh that talk the taking i don't know i, I don't know how many exactly like a hundred breaths or something like that yeah. or like breathing and combining these two is there uh, a benefit to that or this is just like this is its own thing 
that's its own thing. I imagine that you could combine them, but not until you master each of them separately. I see. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the what we were talking about there is deferring reward. Taking the hundred breaths. I want the ice cream. But I take a hundred breaths before I pick up the spoon. I pick up the spoon. I want the ice cream. I take a hundred breaths before I move the spoon to the ice cream. That's it's a similar thing, but it's different. And that's just deferring the reward to help you break the pattern. This is a different way of breaking the pattern. And and this is in some ways, this is more first day. This is like immediately i have to stop this pattern yeah that's why i felt it was appropriate to use the word trigger yeah as we understand it today which is like ah i'm upset you gotta you gotta cope with that somehow that makes sense yeah. thank you yeah so your job now osama is to master both of those techniques and then see if you can combine them and then tell us how it works experimentations <laughs> excellent i gotta tell you though if you take a hundred breaths between like getting the ice cream scooping that's soup it, at that point <laughs> yeah. that soup. i'm just gonna say fuck that you know <laughs> <laughs> but point taken that you know delayed gratification is it's like a muscle can you strengthen that can you find ways to do that so absolutely let's see how yeah. those connect to one another yeah and there are times i mean i usually have a tasbi with me and if not i have my fingers and i have to count them out so that i can't cheat on the hundred breaths you know because there's a part of you that's going to go one two <laughs> 10 47 96 100 i'm done yay throw it across the room yeah yeah that's to keep you honest <laughs> yep so that's that's what we got for you tonight a fun little practice it uh it ties in with things that we've been talking about and we will put a link up here somewhere to the stop exercise video that we did a little while mm -hmm. back because uh they they come together yeah and any gram in the will might be worth checking yeah, out too it might be worth checking out too don't want to get carried away and you have 47 different <laughs> yeah I get it. all good well thank you so much for being here everybody it's good to have you and giving this practice a try hope it works to help you kind of deactivate in those moments where you get really activated and it may take a little practice don't expect it to be perfect the first few times you do it, this is this is again, it's a skill building exercise. Yeah, it's not expected to be perfect the first hundred times you do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Remember the difference between Sufis and a lot of other groups is we're in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And in in a way, as Mushtaq was saying, this is an opportunity to kind of be your own guide, be your own teacher. Yeah. And we know how important that is in those moments where there isn't anyone beside you or in front of you to tell you what to do. So we want to empower you in that. And if you want actual help in doing this, the next time we do a retreat. Yeah, you'll get to do it live and in person. So yep. There you go. Okay. Again, thanks everybody. And uh, let's go on Brady Bunch mode. You're we? already on Brady Bunch. I have anticipated <sighs> so you. Yeah. All right. Well, we can wave to each other. Wave to All everybody right, watching on the replay. Take care. 
And we, and will, we will see you next week for a two talk Sunday. It's going to be the other talk and the regular talk, 10.30 a.m. Pacific time and 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you then. Take care.